So why do you have some of the same characteristics as your parents? And why are you different? That's what we'll be talking about in this module. So this information comes from chapter 8 of our textbook. This module, the goals for the learners are that they'll be able to describe how traits are passed between generations, define the components of the human reproductive system, recognize the steps in development and pregnancy, and lastly, to be able to list several human genetic disorders. So there will be four lecture videos in this module talking about the concepts of inheritance, human reproductive systems, pregnancy and human development, and lastly, human genetic disorders. It has been clear since the beginning of observation that there is a family resemblance between related individuals. Both in humans, in plants, in animals, there is a connectedness or a relatedness between parents and offspring or between many individuals in a generation. Humans have used this to breed larger fruits and vegetables, as well as make a variety of breeds of domesticated animals. An Augustinian monk, Gregor Mendel, was one of the first people to accurately analyze patterns of inheritance. he deduced the fundamental principles of genetics. Gregor Mendel published his work in 1866, and this was actually before the discovery of DNA or chromosomes. Gregor Mendel studied garden peas for a variety of different reasons. First off, these plants were easy to self-fertilize or cross-fertilize, meaning he could control the reproduction among or between the plants easily. They also produced many offspring with each cross. They had a fast generation time. He could get two or three generations in a single growing season. And also, they were cheap and easy to grow. Gregor Mendel carried out both these self- and cross-fertilizations. using these pea plants. In his experiments, Gregor Mendel looked at many different traits, and of those traits, he found that, such as flower color, purple flower color was dominant to white flower color. That axial position of flowers was dominant to terminal flowers. That yellow peas are actually dominant to green peas, but that green pod color is dominant to yellow pod color. After performing these experiments over and over, Gregor Mendel formulated several hypotheses. About how inheritance occurs. First off, Gregor Mendel proposed that there are alternative forms of genes called alleles. And so, for instance, for the flower color gene, there's the purple allele and the white allele. Or if we're talking about, for humans, human hair color, there might be a blonde allele or a brown allele or a black hair allele. Now, for each of these characteristics, for each trait an organism has, an organism inherits two alleles, one from each parent. Mendel also observed that it's these alleles which can be dominant or recessive. If an organism has one of each allele, they will only show the dominant trait. And lastly, Gregor Mendel proposed that gametes, the sex cells, sperm and egg, they each carry only one allele for each inherited characteristic. Now, there are a few terms I want to introduce you to so that we can discuss some of these 
genetic experiments. The first is phenotype. The phenotype of an organism is a description of its physical traits. If the pea plant has purple flowers or white flowers, that is its phenotype. If a human has blonde hair or brown hair, that is their phenotype. Genotype is a genetic description of an organism. It's seeing which alleles an organism has. So if we say that this pea plant has two copies of that purple flower color allele, that would be its genotype. And there are a couple terms we use when describing genotype. If an individual has two of the same allele, if they receive the same allele from each of their parents, from their mother and their father, then we would say that that individual is homozygous. For that particular gene, because both of the alleles are the same. So a pea plant could be homozygous for the purple flower color allele, or a human could be homozygous for having brown hair or having the brown hair color allele. Now, if the two alleles that an individual receives are different from each other, then we use the term heterozygous. That prefix hetero means different, and so heterozygous, they have two different alleles. The allele that this individual received from their father and their mother are different from each other. And so looking at how these terms can be used, here we see some example again of the pea flowers from Gregor Mendel's plants. So the genotypes, an individual can be homozygous for the capital P allele or the purple flower color allele. They could be heterozygous, having one copy of the purple flower color allele and one copy of the white flower color allele, or they could be homozygous for the white flower color allele. Yet the phenotype, they're either going to look purple or they're going to look white. Now it turns out that some patterns of genetic inheritance are not explained by Gregor Mendel's laws. These inconsistencies do not mean that Mendel's conclusions were wrong. It's just that not all cases are as simple as Mendel's traits. It turns out that some genes have more than two alleles. In Gregor Mendel's pea plants, each gene he looked at only had two different options. But, as I discussed, for, for humans, for hair color, we have multiple different alleles. There's a variety of different genes that have more than two options. Also, it turns out that sometimes alleles do not show complete dominance. So what do we mean by this? Well, let's take, for instance, the case of snapdragons. Now, this is a different type of plant. It's not a garden pea. It's a different type of flower. In snapdragons, there's two different alleles. There's the red flower color allele and the white flower color allele. And so if you take a true breeding red snapdragon and a true breeding white snapdragon and breed them together, all of the offspring will be pink. They'll have both one red allele and one white allele. And now their phenotype, their appearance is different than if they were homozygous for red or homozygous for white. When the hybrids have an appearance in between the phenotypes of the two parents, we say that those two alleles are incompletely dominant to each other. White and red together make pink for these flowers. Now this can also happen in humans. One example is hypercholesteremia, or having a high blood cholesterol level. Now this is an incompletely dominant trait in humans. There's a receptor for cholesterol molecules on our liver cells, and there's a gene that codes for them. Having two functional versions of this gene means you have a lot of cholesterol receptors on your liver, and that actually helps to lower the blood cholesterol level because your liver can filter it out. There's a mutated version of this that makes a defective cholesterol receptor, 
And if that's the case, if an individual has two copies of those, they're going to have very high blood cholesterol levels because their body isn't able to filter out the cholesterol from their blood. Now, an individual who's heterozygous, meaning they have one functional copy of the gene and one non-functional copy, they will have a mild version of the disease. They'll have slightly elevated blood cholesterol levels, more than normal, but not as high as someone who has a severe version of the disease. Another exception to Mendel's observations has to do with human blood typing and the ABO blood grouping. There's a gene known as the I gene in humans, and capital IA allele codes for the A-type sugar, capital IB allele codes for the B-type sugar, and the little i allele codes for no sugar at all. Well, it turns out that the little i allele is recessive to both capital IA and capital IB, but those two alleles, capital IA and capital IB, they are co-dominant to each other, meaning if they're both present, they will both be fully shown. The ABO blood groups in humans are the results of multiple alleles of a single gene. Two of the human blood type alleles exhibit codominance. So if an individual has the capital IA allele and the capital IB allele, their blood type will be AB because both the A-type sugar will be present and the B-type sugar will be present. It's not some weird half and half sugar that's half A or half B. Both alleles are fully expressed in the phenotype. Now this is different than incomplete dominance, where the phenotypes of the homozygotes are blended in the heterozygotes. So to compare these two, if we think of incomplete dominance, let's imagine you have some mice. Some have black fur, some have white fur. You breed them together and all their offspring have gray fur. We would call that incomplete dominance. But instead, if you had mice with black fur and mice with white fur, you breed them together and the offspring have black and white spots or black and white patches, then we would say that is co-dominant because both fully black and fully white fur are present in the offspring. Both phenotypes are represented. Now it turns out that there are also some traits in which multiple genes are all affecting one single characteristic. We call this polygenic inheritance. Poly meaning many, and in this case genic referring to genes. Multiple genes controlling a single phenotype. Now, an example of this in human genetics is actually default levels of skin pigmentation on human skin. Turns out that there are at least three different genes, all of which operate in an incompletely dominant manner, that determine the initial starting levels of pigmentation in someone's skin. Because there are so many genes involved in this process, there aren't just one or two options, but there's a gradient, there's a range of intensity of pigment deposition in skin. Human height is another example of this, where there are multiple genes involved in genetically determining how tall someone will be, provided they have all the nutrients they need while they're growing. Many human characteristics result from a combination of heredity and environment. Here we see two identical twin sisters. Genetically, they are the same. In fact, they're the result of a single egg that was fertilized and then during development split into two individuals. And yet with these two sisters, we notice differences, slight differences in complexion or the level of skin pigmentation, slight difference in hair color. Now this could be that one sister lives in a sunnier environment, is exposed to the sun more often. That can cause both a darkening of the skin and potentially a lightening of the hair. But also, if one of these sisters decided to bleach her hair and dye her hair blue, that would also be an environmentally caused difference in the phenotype. So both internal and external conditions can influence phenotype. including temperature, chemicals, and nutrition. Here we see a picture of a Siamese cat, and the distinctive coat patterning of a Siamese cat is because the enzyme which makes the brown or black pigment is not active at normal body temperatures. 
So it's only those areas of the cat that have lower temperature that actually have that darker fur color. So in summary, alleles are passed from parents to offspring. Some traits are controlled by a single gene, and some traits are controlled by multiple genes. The environment can also influence the ways in which genes are expressed. The phenotype of an organism, their physical appearance, is dependent on their genotype, but also other environmental influences. In the next video, we'll be talking about the organ systems that allow for human reproduction.